Okay, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm. Uh, what are you? What, what, I, why? Why do you keep? What you? I'm trying to get into your microphone, lower the. Way. Okay, you're way. You are way too close to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see, even you sound like. Yeah, very close. Let's just stop. You want to? The microphone is on. I can hear it. See. Hello, hello, hello. Testing one, two. That's not how you're doing. Okay, okay, okay. You go to your microphone right now. I will go. All right, all right. And if you want to go, hello, 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 and test and smack the microphone and all that, you go ahead. I don't need to. I know mine works. I hear it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Hank. Uh, hey, where's Billy? I haven't seen Billy. Hey, Billy! Billy! Oh, yes, Mr. James. Yes, hello. Hello there. Hello there. Oh, you're doing your little Obi-Wan Kenobi there. Do you do an Obi-Wan Kenobi, Billy? Hello there. I guess not. What? Nothing. Okay. So, uh, how are you? Have you had a... It's a new year, Billy. It's a new year. We have the, the new season of the podcast. We're back at it. I've been seeing all of the things. People are excited about that. And we have a, we have a very special episode this this time. Oh, yeah. No, I've seen... I know, I know, I know exactly what's going to happen. And I've been here in the studio preparing everything and making it all just wonderful. And that's right. We have a special guest in the studio for the podcast today. Oh, no, no, absolutely, yes. I think she's wonderful. Okay. There's so many things to cover this year. I'm, I'm excited because now, in some ways, people are like, oh, you bring the show back. But it's good to have this kind of long pause because now I'll come back in and I have all these things. There's so many other characters. If you're new to the podcast... Welcome to talking to myself. We're actually gonna we'll have Mr. Announcer guy come in and do the formal introduction, but this is usually how it works here. I have a little talking with with Billy. Billy is the intern here at the show, and Billy brings me my coffee, which you never drink. No, because I don't drink coffee, <laughs> but you still bring it for me. I don't know. You could bring me water because you know it's always good to have water. Oh yeah, and you have that new uh, sounder there from uh, Mr. Announcer guy. That says, it's time to drink some water. Ooh, that's good water. That's right. Well, there you go. That sounded just like him. Really? No. But you are the intern. You help make everything happen. You help me come up with ideas for the show and all of that. And you're very good at your job, Billy. Really, sir? Yes. That's wonderful. Do you think I'll ever get paid? No, probably not. <laughs> and Hank, the engineer, who we heard earlier. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, nothing. Are we set to go? Are we all good? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Wow. You're amazing at your job. I know. Isn't it true? It's so true. Okay, okay. Hank, have you had a good new year so far? It's 2024. No, no, it's 2023. No, it's 2024. No, because it was 22 and then now it's 23. You're off a year. Really? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> okay, okay. And Mr. Announcer Guy, he comes in and announces, let's bring in Mr. Announcer Guy. Let's get, let's get on with it. What do you say, huh? Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy! <laughs> Yes, James. Hello. Happy New Year. Yeah, we didn't really say Happy New Year on the new one, the last show, which was the first one of the new year, which is... Anyways, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, man. If you could introduce the show, then we'll get on with it. What do you say? Yeah, man. Here we go. Cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's also introduce Jerry the Music Man. It's a new year. We are introduce everybody, right? Yeah, dude. Jerry the Music Man is the guy that handles all the... I don't know why we have you, Hank, because Jerry the Music Man does all the music and the mixing of all of that. He's kind of already kind of engineering things in that, in the other little room there. And he's, he's kind of a 40s retro kind of guy. And say hi there, uh, Jerry the Music Man. Hey there, James. I'm having a great 2024. See, look at that. Jerry the Music Man is like a 40s dude, and he knows what year it is, Hank. Yeah, whatever, man. I don't know. I just, you know, look, I take the microphones. Hello, hello, hello. Would you stop? Well, there's lots of different people on this show. There's a lot of different characters. We have Guinevere, who's my biggest fan. We haven't talked to Guinevere in a while. We'll have to call her this year and see how she's doing. And Ferris, down at the Billiard Zone, he owns a pool hall, and he's a kind of a wise sage that, that we call up sometimes when we have questions and we want answers to things in life. We have my agent, Franklin. We, and his son, Brian. <laughs> Maybe we'll call all of them. We'll have to call everybody and get it all going. But there's so much to come this year in the James Arnold Taylor podcast. It's very exciting. And today, we have a very special guest. And so we're going to get right into that after we do the introduction, which, oh, you're waiting to do, right? Yeah, man. Patiently waiting. Okay. Uh, cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. 
You done it, James. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Talking to myself, the Jetcast. Today, Jet's got a very special guest. So now here he is, the same guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this one, James Arnold Taylor! Wow, that was a big intro for the new year, and this is actually episode three of season four, because we're calling it season four, but we, yeah, otherwise season four would have only had one episode from last year when we put that one out but anyways okay thanks mr announcer guy you got it man i'm going to go now and there he goes and then jerry the music man hits that music and then we start talking here and we say welcome everybody to the james arnold taylor podcast it is wonderful to be back with you all we're excited we're excited i'm sure you're excited i i saw all of the comments when i posted on instagram that i did an episode in fact it's this episode with a very special guest and the very special guest is of course my daughter lydia rose taylor the fantastic uh, lydia rose taylor and we're gonna catch up with her she was a guest a few years back on the show and everybody loved that episode and no matter where i go people will say i loved it when your daughter was on it was so great and you guys talking about stuff so we recorded so we already recorded this but this is i'm just doing the intro to it all now so we recorded a whole episode that actually we talked for about 70 minutes so i'm actually going to break it up into two episodes so lydia rose gets two episodes of the james arnold taylor podcast so this episode which is episode three season four season four episode three and uh, and then will the next one will be season four episode four <gasps> look at that and then after that we'll get into all the other stuff that we'll do we're going to be talking about my movie hidden blessings soon we're going to be talking about all the comic cons that i'll be doing we're going to be talking about other things that i've worked on through the last year and some really cool fun things and how everything is going and we're going to be talking about you it's going to be a great year for the james arnold taylor podcast we're glad to be back and here, without further ado, is part one of my interview with my amazing daughter, Lydia Rose Taylor. Cue that interview, Jerry. Uh, J- cue that interview, Hank, or Jerry the Music Man. I'm going to ask Jerry the Music Man to cue that interview because I don't trust you, Hank. What do you mean? I can hit the button. It's right there. Right. Right. Hey, Jerry, which one do I? Yeah, see, I told you. All right, enjoy. Welcome, Lydia. Thank you. Back to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. It's only been, I think, three, four years, something like that. No biggie. Something like that. Over three years since you've been on the show. (laughs) Although I haven't been doing the show much uh, lately. But that's because I've been busy with you and Ah, and your mom and our, our life. Sorry, everyone. I've been taking taking my dad. No. Well, you've actually been helping though quite a bit as well. I hope so. I've had a bunch of fun this year. Now, on the previous episode, I talked about how we've been going to Comic-Cons this last year Mm -hmm. and that we went as a family and that you were my assistant and my handler at the table and all the things at the the booth. You know, so for people that haven't been to a Mm Comic-Con, you go into this giant convention center and then there's all this stuff to see. There's art, there's collectors, there's comic books, there's toys, there's all these people. And then there's this area they usually call the celebrity area or the autograph area, right? And then you go into that and then there's these booths everywhere lined up on all sides and there's names of every, it's like walking through your childhood. It's names of every celebrity from every movie or TV show or whatever that you ever could imagine, video games. And you can go up and meet them. And so you get in line and then you, uh, you know, and there's, you have to pay for the autograph, you pay for a photo or whatever. Yeah. That's the setup. That's how it works. So when I, as a celebrity guest, <laughs> go into this, I need someone there helping me out. And that's what you've been doing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, okay. It's- so hang on. Before we go any further, you don't have your water with you. Yeah. Um, I have hot water. It's called tea. You have tea. Okay, I'm going to let it go. Mm-hmm. I have my water. Wait, it's, uh, let's, uh, Mr. Announcer Guy, we're about to drink some water. It's time to drink some water. <sighs> ah, that's good water. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. 
know, you drink now you can drink your tea. Thank you. He, I guess he could have said it's time to drink some tea, but he said it's time to drink some water. So I uh, have a little water. Ah, okay. That's so good tea. that's good tea. So then you were a part of the whole Comic-Con Clone Wars experience. So what was your Growing up in it. take on this last year? Oh, it was amazing. Like I said, I have grown up with the Clone Wars crew and it has always brought me so much joy to see you and and Matt Lanter and Ashley Eckstein interacting with the fans and just how genuine you guys are from being there behind the table to when we get back in the green room or at home. Mm -hmm. That heart, I see that heart on both sides, but particularly this year. Yeah. It's just been, it's been a whirlwind. I, I did not realize, I think I've been very blessed to be a part of this household. I didn't really realize the impact that Star Wars, particularly Clone Wars, had on everybody. And it's so, so amazing to watch and to see and to hear all of the fan stories as well. Because so, as you said, I was about an assistant, a handler. So when you walk up to the table, the first person that they would meet would be me. And I talk to them and get to know them. And meeting people, hearing people's stories is one of my absolute favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. And hearing how, what a deep impact Clone Wars had. And, and not just Clone Wars, but also Final Fantasy, Ratchet and Clank, all of these other beautiful things that you have had the ability to be a part of. Right. And hearing how much it affected each person was really, really special. I think that's the well. coolest part. That's the reason why we go to the cons is so we can interact with everybody, give those everybody those moments, those chances to actually get to say thank you. And yeah. we get to say thank you back. And that's really been great. And because you have grown up in it, you've been so, so you are about to turn 19. I'm sure that by the time this comes out, you will already be 19 years old. Look at that. Look Isn't at that crazy? That. And so you have had an entire life filled with Star Wars because I've actually been Obi-Wan Kenobi longer than you've been alive. That's true. So your whole life, I have been a part of Star Wars. And so you got to go to Star Wars Weekend, Star Wars Celebration. Uh, we went to Legoland. We've gone to so many We've different things. Everywhere. We've been to the Dodger games where I sang the national anthem because of Star Wars. So in school, when I had to learn the national anthem, um, Rather than going on Apple Music or Spotify, I went to YouTube and I learned your version off of the Dodgers. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> okay. And, you know, but let me also say, you have had a chance to be an actress as well. Yeah. Because you were in a movie with me, the movie Animal Crackers. Right. Uh, that, which is on Netflix and you can still see it on Netflix. And, and doing splendidly too. I'm yeah. always surprised by friends or friends or friends who are like, oh, I saw this movie and you were in it. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. That's very cool. And then you were on If You Give a Mouse a Cookie mm -hmm. as well. Right. And I loved so, those books growing up. Yeah. And then you got to be in, in a couple episodes of that. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. But acting was not your thing. That's not what you wanted to do. I always say um, I'm good at acting if no one knows that I'm acting. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that's okay. <laughs> and so you have had this very blessed life. Of, very. And I've had a very blessed life. And together uh, with your mother, we have a, a wonderful blessed life. And we get to share with everybody. And so you got to then kind of change it up this year by interacting with the fans. And a lot of people didn't know that you were my daughter, right? Right. That was, that was really the fun part is I think a lot of times people get very nervous and meeting whoever it is, because this person has such a strong impact on them. So for a lot of y'all, when I got to meet you before, like many of you, I mean, came up and you were like, you're Lydia. I recognize your voice. I've seen you grow up. And that was so, so special for me. But I know most of y'all didn't, didn't know me at first point. So I feel like I was really able to genuinely get to know you and talk to you without the pressure of who I am or who my dad is or any of that connection and just nerd out and geek out over how exciting all of this stuff is. Right. And that was the really, really special part is when I'm able to just have that genuine conversation without any pressure. And then, I mean, there were times when you would then turn and be like, oh yeah, that's my daughter. And that's just the, the moment of excitement. It's fun for everybody to, yeah, kind of make that connection. Right. And uh, because we, of course, we look identical, you and I. I know. No <laughs> one would guess. No. Um, I say that because, of course, you are originally from China, and we adopted you from China. What? And so, <laughs> and I am blonde hair, blue eyes, and so we do not look alike. Not at all. When you were a baby, 
and people would go up and see you and and they you were amazing as a baby you're amazing as a toddler you're amazing as a young woman now but uh you were always just so beautiful and lovely and people would go and they'd look at you and they'd look down at you oh she's so wonderful and then they'd go to look up to us <laughs> And then they'd get this confused look because neither your mother or I <laughs> look like it. Although you and your mom do actually kind of look alike and people yeah. buy that. They just assume that your You're, father, if I'm not around, right. they assume that your father must be Asian because of you. But yeah. my mom and I take, as is, you know, of course, Papa, but my mom and I try to take a weekly day out, girls day out, treasure that time together. I was homeschooled throughout my childhood. So it really gave me it started off actually as incentive. If I finished school by Friday, then we could go out and have a fun day. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated, we just kept doing that because it was really special. But there were plenty of times when we were out shopping and there would be people asking like, oh, so your husband is Asian or oh, mm -hmm. so your dad is. And I'm like, nope. It's a beautiful thing to be adopted. Oh, well, yes, we love adoption. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's many people uh, that are listening that have been affected by adoption. Either they've been adopted or they have adopted or they know someone or their sibling or what have you. And adoption is a beautiful, wonderful thing. And it's blessed our family more than we can imagine. Indeed. So anyways, I brought that up for no particular reason, I guess. It was just, a, oh, a joke mm -hmm. about us. Ah. Because we, cause that's, the, that's the thing. When people come up to the table, they never assume that you're my daughter if they don't know exactly that you're my daughter because exactly. we do not look anything alike. And so that's, that's the connection. They always go, oh, I had people come up and go, the young girl you have working at the front is so good. It's lovely. I say, okay, well, good. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let her family know. <laughs> but anyways, we went to many different places. Do you know how many we went to? Well, you went to 18. I went to 18. You went to 19. I was I made the we were supposed to go to 20. I made the mistake of getting sick. I deeply apologize. Yeah. So you didn't, you did not go to DC Awesome Con with me. Correct. And so we had the crew from CelebWorks came in. So CelebWorks is our management company that manages our appearances at the Comic-Cons, my appearances at the Comic-Cons. Although it's ours, I guess, because people want to see Lydia. Although you won't be joining us really this year. No. So... CelebWorks manages Neri and Chris are the owners and they take wonderful care of us. And then there's Jess and Jess was my handler. She took over for you. Lydia 2.0, she said. DC when you were unavailable. <laughs> and then we of course have to thank Jackie because Jackie took wonderful care of us through the whole year, all, all, all the Star Wars crew. And so Jackie and Jess and Neri and Chris and Jen and Alex, who for some weird reason you call Fred, <laughs> I, I don't get that at all. This is the problem. When I confirm your name and you reply with, you can call me anything. I will call you anything. So that's what happened. You met Alex. Alex works for CelebWorks. And he's right. a wonderful young man. And he said, you can call me anything. And so you said, I'll call you Fred. <laughs> he said, well, I'll respond to anything. You can call me whatever. You can call me Fred if you want. He pulled a random name. Oh, okay. I so see. I chose then to But then was call it that random? Fred. Because, you know, I'm Fred Flintstone. So right. he was probably looking up at my banner and saw Fred Flintstone and said, no. I'm Maybe so. I know he works with Kellen Goff. And I think Kellen has a character... By Fred Bear or something like that. Ah, um, so maybe Fred is just one of those ones that's in his in his <laughs> name wheelhouse, and it was the first one that popped into his mind. So maybe now so. you call Alex Fred. His contact in my phone is Fred. Which is very confusing for all of us, but <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so we have a wonderful crew uh, there, and uh, we went to 18 Comic-Cons, you and I and your mother. That's right. And... Uh, do you remember? Uh, so we started in New Orleans That's around right. that this was time our of first year. One. And then do you know where we went from there? Do you remember? We went to Pensacola. We went to Pensacola. That Florida, was a fun show. And that was a fun one. That was without, that was one of the only ones without Matt and Ashley. Yeah, that I was, was solo. the only one. Well, I was with David Kay. So it was a Ratchet and Clank Comic Con for us then. Fun. And we had a good time in Pensacola. And then where did we go from Pensacola? We went to, we went to Seattle. Seattle. That was okay. our first read pop show of the year. That okay. one was fun. We went to Seattle and D. Bradley Baker, I believe, was with us in Seattle, wasn't he? I think maybe he was. Yes. I think D was at okay. that show. Yeah. D I'll was at that you show. On that, yeah. And then Chicago. Chicago. And then London. London. London oh. was a lot of fun. Okay. Huntsville. Huntsville. Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We went to Detroit. Mm -hmm. We went to Phoenix in the middle of June. I do not recommend that. Oh, well, it was fine. It wasn't that bad. You were inside. The ground was hot. You were the convention inside store ground all the was time. hot. 
<laughs> You're honestly going to complain. I'm not complaining. I'm okay. blessed to be there, but just for point of reference, I wouldn't recommend Phoenix in summer. That's all. Whatever. <laughs> all right. And then where? We went to Dallas. Dallas. You went to DC. I did not. We went to Miami. Boston was a highlight. We went to Toronto. Mm-hmm. Back to Texas and Austin. I'm mm-hmm. looking at a list. I don't just I know. know this. Um, we went to Salt Lake City and then went immediately from Salt Lake City to Cincinnati. Yeah, in the same weekend, which was, I, I wish we could have stayed in Salt Lake and then maybe done Cincinnati on another time right. or a separate. I wish they weren't the same weekend because it was. we didn't get enough time at either place. Right. It would have been lovely if we had gotten the full weekend at both of those places because they were both lovely. All right. So they were. Cincinnati. Indeed. And then we went to Minneapolis. To no, Minneapolis. No, we no, did not. We I'm sorry. No, we went to Chattanooga. We went to New York and then Chattanooga. New York and Chattanooga. Yes. And then we were supposed to go to Minneapolis. Right. But then I caught a cold and we couldn't travel. So out of all those places, there's so many different stories. And I thought it'd be fun if we shared some stories and some things because you met a lot of people. I met a lot of people. We had a wonderful time. And you have some fond memories of people that you met uh, throughout this whole year oh of doing goodness. the shows? There are there are certainly people that are popping out. Um, I'm thinking of Melanie and Sue. I'm thinking of mm-hmm. Brandon. I'm thinking of Ashley. Mm-hmm. We'll go through. And not Ashley Eckstein. Not Ashley, Ashley Eckstein. There is a sweet, sweet gal. It's um, fangirling over Jesus. And she has this clothing line. She has these really cool little trinkets and things. And so she'll have a booth out. So there's the sub celebrity area where all of us are. And then there's a thing called Artist Alley that is usually next to the autographing spot. And that's, this is where all of you guys bring these amazing, ingenious ideas, artists and collectibles and items and Funko Pops and like whatever it is that your happy little heart desires. And y'all set up little booths and sell. And it's amazing to get to know some of these vendors. But one of them is Ashley. And she came, I believe, for her birthday. Mm -hmm. And she came to me, Ashley Eckstein. Mm -hmm. It was also on Ashley Eckstein's birthday. Mm. So this was a very exciting weekend. I cannot remember which show this was at. Wasn't I believe it was Cincinnati. In, uh, Cincinnati, yeah. I believe so. Yes. And that was just absolutely wonderful. She and her mom were there, I believe, and she just came through and she was such a sweet girl, like I said. Her her tag is fangirling over Jesus. Mm-hmm. So she takes these beautiful things from Star Wars to Marvel and everything in between and brings Jesus into it. Mm-hmm. She'll put a scripture, this Mandalorian, this is the way, and then she'll have like a Jesus scripture, the mm-hmm. way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. And she's she's gotten quite a bit of fans of her stuff. And so now she goes to Comic-Cons as well and sells her goods and meets people and has a great time. And then we have like other folks like the artists, like Brittany, mm-hmm. or we have uh, Julia, or we have Aaron. We have lots of amazingly talented artists that we've met. And they put so much love into each of their They do, pieces. and they all come by and say hello there Mm -hmm. to the booth and everybody says hello there and then we had uh, the most things kenobi we had lauren from most things kenobi come by and then we were in toronto do you remember Mm -hmm. we met a special fan in toronto indeed brandon and he proclaimed himself as your greatest fan in china Uh, no my greatest fan in china (laughs) he proclaimed to be your greatest fan in canada canada not china no (laughs) um and Honestly, I, I believe him. Be a wonderful, wonderful man. He came by, he had mm-hmm. you sign the book, and he explained how your book, Jet 365, really changed his life and set that him was up. Very nice. It yeah, was, was lovely. Very nice. My my book, which I believe I missed the tenth anniversary of this year. I was gonna do a re release and change up and add some things because it's been, I believe it's been 10 years since I uh, wrote my book, wow. JAT 365, 365 Daily Inspirations for the Pursuit of Your Dreams. That's a long subtitle. And Brandon and many other folks have read that book and taken it to heart and have really made an effort to make changes in their lives based off of the stuff that I put in there, which is based off of my social media posts. Because when social media started all those years ago, it was, a, it could be, well, believe it or not, it still is a very negative place. Indeed. And so I tried to challenge myself to post something positive every day for a year. And so I did on my Twitter at the time. It was Twitter was really all there was outside of Facebook. And I was never a big Facebook person, although I think I probably put it on my Facebook and my Twitter accounts at the time, because again, it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Then I took all of those and I wrote a book 
And I made them into a, like a devotional, like a daily journal of your thoughts and dreams and goals. And you can still get Jat365 on Amazon.com. Look at that shameless plug. <laughs> and Brandon uh, had really loved the book and taken it to heart. And God bless him. And he brought his book and I signed his book for him. And he brought a, a million other things for me to sign. God bless him. It was very, very kind. And he was just so wonderful. And then he was going to go speak at his church. He was going to actually give a... Uh, a message at his church. And he did. And he sent me a copy of it. It's wonderful. And he did wonderful. And he, he actually used my, my book and my sayings and my stuff that I talk about in my podcast and all as uh, parts of his message. And I was very, very, very humbled by that. He was such a joyful spirit. Yeah. It was really wonderful to meet him. Really wonderful. He also, his cake, his birthday cake, I believe was my book. It was. Which and was amazing. All of these like cake decorating shows on Netflix, if you're following, are really popular nowadays. But the art on that, it, it was, it was a, it was your book, Jet yeah. 365, open to a page and it looked exactly like it. It was very cool. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So he, and then Ashley, as we talked about Ashley with fangirling over Jesus, and right. I'm looking right now at the, the, um, uh, what would it be like? That's like a, a coffee canister, or a hot cold mm-hmm. canister that she made me that says, mug, hello tumbler. there. M- um, yeah. Mug or tumbler. Very good. You're very hip. And it <laughs> says, hello there. Hello there. And then it says, ah, that's good water. Cause she listens to the podcast. So hi, Ashley. Hi, Brandon. We uh, had a lot of people asking this year. Y'all want the podcast back. There was a fellow by the name of James who I had read his emails on my podcast before he had gone through, he had worked at a place and there was a fire and there was all this. And James came up to the table with his wife and they were wonderful. And he said who he was. He's like, I, and you know, everybody says, I don't know. You probably won't remember me. So of course I, how could I forget you? And he, he told this story. And if y'all have listened to this podcast for a long time, he was going through a real kind of hard time at the time. And the, the place he had worked at, there was a fire and everything got kind of messed up and, and he didn't really know where he was going to go, what he was going to do with all of that. And I, I believe I, I said a prayer for him on that. I sent it some stuff out and he came up to the table to say hello and to say that it made an impact on his life. And that was really amazing and really, really special. And so uh, James, if you're listening, God bless you and, and, and your lovely wife. And we, we just thank you for that. And we, we had multiple things like this. We had folks from every different con. There was always a story at every single one of these places we went to where somebody came up thanked us for the podcast, said it made a difference in their life, thanked me for, you know, my videos or whatever it is I do as, as a silly voice actor making goofy videos and such. So It has more of an impact than you realize. Yep. Yeah. Oh, are you thirsty? Let's drink uh. some water. It's time to drink some water. Ah, that's good water. I am a strong tea drinker. That's good water. Indeed. You are a tea drinker. Okay, I'm so let's drinker. let's jump off of the Comic Cons for a second. Let's talk about this. So years ago, your mother and I got very nervous because then you were like, I'm gonna try coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna try coffee. I want coffee. Coffee's yummy. I want coffee. Well, so um You know that that age in like your middle school years where you're like, I can drink coffee now and it's the most exciting thing in the world. Yeah. So we're like, oh great, she's gonna be a coffee drinker. So, so and no offense to all of you that are coffee drinkers, but I don't drink coffee. My wife doesn't drink coffee. We drink tea if we drink anything. So we were like, oh man, she's gonna be a coffee drinker. So you were for a very short time. Very short time. And then the false is strong with you and you mm-hmm. came to your senses. Come to your senses. And you decided that you were going to have tea. Tea. Yeah. That's really all there is to it. I I do love tea. I don't need caffeine. I don't think. It is pretty much exactly as you described it. So what's your favorite tea? Black tea. Black tea. And black tea is caffeinated though. So you do have caffeine, but you do also sometimes drink a decaf black tea. I will sometimes. Yeah. I have various options. Herbal tea is also really nice. Herbal tea is nice. I'm telling her to get closer to her microphone. Hello, hello, hello. There you go. Sorry, yes. I've been spending too much time with Hank. Herbal teas herbal now. Herbal teas at, in the evening. In the evening. Nice. And then what kind of herbal tea will you have? You uh, like like those flowered like chamomile and stuff. I don't like <laughs> chamomile tea. Chamomile is nice before bed. 
hibiscus is good. Raspberry yeah, leaf you like is all those good. Fruity smelling teas that drive me nuts. All you women out there, raspberry leaf tea. That's where it's at. Raspberry leaf tea. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> I like kukicha, which yes. is a Japanese tea and it's really good. It's a twig tea. It has light caffeine, but you grew up drinking kukicha and you always Indeed. liked that. And I think that's probably why I like black teas best. Yep. I yeah. would choose an English breakfast or an Earl Grey. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I like I like English breakfast. I'm not fond of Earl Grey. Earl Grey, a lot of places infuse it with lavender. Yeah, see, and I don't like lavender. I, I'm, I concur. I'm allergic to lavender and everybody loves lavender. Everybody, oh, it's, it smells wonderful. They spray it everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. For all of you that love lavender, I'm sorry. I It's just not my thing. It, well, and I'm a little allergic to it. It makes my nose right. go a little crazy, which is unusual, I guess. But I'll never forget one time I was going to this this dentist and he was very holistic and he's all, and I, I they put me back in the chair and lay me all back. And then he has this <laughs> little Q-tip and he goes, bink, bink, right over my nose or like right under my, on my lip, on my mm-hmm. upper lip. And I go, what was that? He goes, oh, it's just a little lavender. I go, what? what? <laughs> and I, I mean, for like the next couple of days, I could not get that smell of lavender off of my my nose. And it's like, ask first. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is me annoyed. Okay, so back to your teas. You also like hot cocoa. I do. And you and your mom make a rooibos tea. Chocolate Rooibos. Chocolate Rooibos. Yeah, so it is a Rooibos tea infused with cacao. And then she will take it. Honestly, my mother is magical when it comes to a blender, when it comes to drinks, when it comes to mocktails, she knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't fully explain it except to know that she makes it real good. Um, but She makes, yeah, and then she makes every day for herself mm-hmm. a matcha, which is a kind of a green tea, matcha tea. It's a Japanese tea as well. And a lot of our, so a lot of our food and our influences are Japanese because of the macrobiotic cooking and such that I went through when I got sick with the toxic mold. The one thing that actually got me healthy was macrobiotic eating and living, which is all Japanese based. And so uh, the few times where I've been to Japan, I've eaten very well and enjoyed all that. I love Japan. I love the culture. I love all of that. The, everybody, it's just beautiful and, and lovely and clean and, and precise. And the food is lovely and it's healing and healthy. And so your mother makes a wonderful matcha She makes a matcha latte. Sometimes That's she makes right. a peppermint matcha. Sometimes she makes a chocolate, chocolate. matcha. She messes around. She does all of that. I haven't heard the blender going yet. This she morning. had it this morning when she you had, were. She already did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't we know had, that. We had it together. And I don't know if you know, but if you turn around and look out your window, Lydia, right now behind you, you'll see that it's snowing again. <gasps> Is it? Yeah, look at that. It's snowing. We've been trapped in the house. Uh, we've been happily at home for the yes, past week. We have. We've and, been I, trapped in the house. and I told in the last episode, I told the story of my wrist. Well, see, we're recording this uh, just a day after I recorded that episode. Now, it'll probably come out a good week or two right. after. But so I am still literally here at home, unable to see a doctor, and I don't know if I have a broken wrist or not. So that's that's fun. So I'm starting to kind of look at, when I look out the window, normally I'd look out the window and be excited when I look out and see snow falling, but now I'm just like, oh good, it's another day I won't be able to get out and have my arm checked. Anyways. We will not get above freezing temperatures until Sunday. Okay. We have not been above freezing temperatures. It was like 35 yesterday, but I don't really count that until last Sunday. So it's been a complete eight days that we're going to be like this. Yeah, it has been, it's been a bit of time. And so anyway, so there you go. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to pull us away from the story. I was just, <laughs> I looked out the window and noticed I'm that it is snowing and it's, it says, oh, the temperature says it's 23 degrees out. <laughs> 23 degrees out and snowing here at the James Arnold Taylor studios. And I, uh, my guest is Lydia Rose Taylor, my amazing daughter who, mm-hmm. uh, okay. So you, let's talk about this. We, I mean, well, okay. Are there still, are there other people, other folks that we want to mention on our journeys at the comic cons people? Now I know one, one person that you really got to know that you really enjoyed. And that is a person that's been a dear friend of mine since before you were born. And that's Jason Marsden. Yes. Yes, of course. Which of course he was in Hidden Blessings. Yes, he was. My um, movie Hidden Blessings, which uh, the next episode, this is your episode, Lydia, the next aw. episode of the James Arnold Taylor podcast, I'll be filling everybody in about Hidden Blessings, but go okay. ahead. Well, I don't know how much I'm going to say then, but. No, no, about Jason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason was a, a part of it. So I had seen him obviously and been involved in this as well, but he was at a lot of shows this year. So the first one was Pensacon. Pensacola. So, okay. Celebworks, which we already touched on earlier, is our booking agency. Mm-hmm. And 
also we've touched on the way that we eat at home. I have grown up extremely healthy. I've grown up eating very clean, very well because of my dad. And I thank him for that because then that gives me the opportunity to go out and not eat so healthy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so after a day at a comic con meeting, all of you guys, um, our booking agency will take us out to dinner. Whoever wants to go, sometimes it's their clients, Lebo's clients, other people, whoever wants to come, big group of people go to dinner, have a blast. So Jason and his girlfriend, Remy, we're at a lot of these shows. And so we got to really, I got to really know them. I know you know Jason pretty well, yeah, yeah. but it was very enjoyable to be able to just get to know them and chat with them. And he's, sure. he's great conversation. He is. He's a wonderful man and a, an extremely talented actor. Indeed. He's been acting since he was uh, a child. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and you remember we used to watch Erie, Indiana, Eerie, remember the Indiana? show? And he was on Erie right. uh, in the last season. And he was pretty funny. He was kind of a, it was kind of a Christian Slater kind of character. He was kind of this crazy mm-hmm. uh, um, orphaned child with crazy spiked <laughs> crazy hair, hair and yeah. all that. And, and he was, yeah, he was doing kind of a Christian Slater thing. And, and Jason and was fantastic. Yeah. Obviously he's most known for Hocus Pocus. So Hocus he was Pocus, traveling yeah, with that sure. and, and Goofy. Uh, and you know, Goofy, he's, Max. Cause he's, he's Max. He's, yeah. So Jason and many other celebrities, are you any other celebrities you want to give shout outs to? I and not like they're listening, but how about Marty? <laughs> Marty, yes, Marty Grabstein. Courage, Courage the Cowardly, the cowardly dog. dog. He was a lot of fun. Marty's great. He's just so kind of crazy, you know. And <laughs> he's he's yeah, he is so, a lot of fun. So much fun, so genuine, also wonderful conversation. I got to see Anna Graves and Vanessa Marshall. Yes, you did. Anna plays the Duchess Satine, of That's course. That's right, the Duchess Satine. You saw the Duchess in Chattanooga, yes. Yes, and Vanessa plays Hera. On yep. Star Wars Rebels. Yep. These are both people that I, of course, have grown up with. and But I just I haven't seen in years due to COVID and then location. We all live all over the country. So that was really, really special was to reconnect and see them again for me personally. Yep. Yeah, just getting to know people, even the people who work. So promoters of the shows, Fan Expo or Read Pop, who are putting on these Comic Cons, will bring in a lot of the same people to work the shows and they have their own staff and all of that as well. So there is something really, really special and unique, especially when we were going, I know in summer we were going a lot, that we all live all over the country. There's people in New York, Florida, LA, Indiana, Chicago, but every weekend we see each other and it's like, it's, it's like we didn't ever go home. And it's something really, really unique about this particular industry that allows us to see people so easily. Yeah. And the way that travel works nowadays. And yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel extremely blessed. I have experienced and seen a lot more than most yeah. 19-year-olds would have experienced or seen. That's true. There is a lot that you have uh, got to see and take in uh, through this world and through this last year alone. And so, and many other fans, were there other fans that you had uh, notes of that? Mikel? Yes. He's, he's fantastic. And he he ends up showing up at a lot of different shows. He's been, yeah, he's been with us. um, Many uh, different shows. Very sweet young man. He works at NASA. He Mm -hmm. works for NASA. And he brings lovely gifts for us for that little, you know, NASA stickers or things and stuff. And then uh, he's always got a story to tell and he's he's just a wonderful man of faith. And we really appreciate when he comes by to say hello there to the table. And a lot of different people come by to say hello. And uh, and we just love that. We love getting to see everybody. There's just been so many. And Chattanooga, there was, I I told the story a little bit the last episode about the gal that was dressed as the Duchess teen, but we had a ton of Duchess Satines actually and Obi-Wans. And then some of my other favorites were the ones that came all the way from London or from England, I should say uh, across the pond, as we would say. Mm -hmm. And they were just amazing, wonderful folks. And they came out to see us and we had a a wonderful time. So shout out to all of them if they're listening and thanks to everybody that took the time to come out and see us. And I hope that more people will come out and see us this year the only way that you'll get to meet the lovely and famous lydia rose taylor though is if you go to megacon and that's probably already over with by the time this comes out so i wonder if we had i'm guessing we had a wonderful time at megacon we did absolutely good Good. and there it is the amazing lydia rose taylor we're going to stop it right there and we're going to get into so there we kind of talked about comic cons and all that the next half we're going to get kind of into where lydia is going with her year 
this next year in her life. I find that interesting. I think some of you will find that interesting. And I think some of you as young people and some of you as parents will find it interesting the way that we interact and talk about life and where things are going. So watch for that one coming out. We're going to be doing the episodes every other week. We're going to put them out every other week to a month. And then from there, we'll kind of see, I'm trying to build up as many of these episodes as I can so that while I'm out doing Comic-Cons and stuff this year, there's still episodes being scheduled and put out for all of you to enjoy. So I hope you've enjoyed this time. I sure enjoyed my time with Lydia. She is such a lovely, wonderful young gal. And there is more to come of that interview. Part two coming up next time on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. We had a good time though, didn't we? Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy, did you have a good time? Yeah, man, I love it. And Hank, did you figure anything out? Well, I figured out that you, uh, you know, I don't know how, but you raised a really good kid. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Billy, how about you? Oh, yes, Mr. James. I, I love, I love uh, Lydia Rose Taylor. She's wonderful. Okay, everybody. Hey, I hope you have a blessed, wonderful week and all goes well in your lives here. And I'll be praying for you and hoping for the best for all of us throughout this week. Remember to breathe, remember to drink water, remember to take care of yourself. Just enjoy, we got more coming up. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy, give us that legal mumbo jumbo. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of YumiGo Inc. Recorded at Jet Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through Backtracks, Digital Juice, Production Tracks, and Partners in Rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Thanks, dude. Yeah, dude. All right. Goodbye.